there you have it, Montag. It didn't come from the government down. There was no dictum, no declaration, no censorship. To start with, no. Technology, mass exploitation and minority pressure carried the trick, thank God. Today, thanks to them, you can stay happy all the time. You're allowed to read comics, the good old confessions or trade journals. My friend, I hope I'm not being presumptuous in calling her that, uh, Rachel Haywire, has presented me with something of a uh, ethical dilemma. Um, normally I'm pretty certain in what I think about things, I have an opinion on, on everything, and it's a weighed and measured opinion arrived at through no small amount of, of thought and investigation, usually. And I have a principle, a very strong principle, against censorship. She's planning to hold an event in which copies of The Secret will be burned, and for each copy burned, a donation will be given to help fight AIDS. Worthy cause. Secrets bullshit. Money to help people. And yet, I had misgivings. I have misgivings. I still can't solve this knot of conflicting issues, and I thought it might be interesting <laughs> to some intellectual masochists out there to follow me through my thought process. Censorship is a tricky beast. And once you allow it for something, it does tend to spread. Slippery slope might be a fallacy, but it does appear to be true. Once you bow to one group's demands, other groups can say, oh, that's not fair, you took their considerations in mind, or what about ours? It is better, generally, I think, for ideas to be able to be criticised, examined, you know, turned around, looked at, taken apart, put back together to compete with each other. An intellectual marketplace of ideas is, is the phrase that people use, though people now take that as a right-wing dog whistle for, for some reason. And, but the basic idea is that good ideas should, through the fact that they're good, rise to the top. Bad ideas should, since they're bad ideas, fall to the bottom. There are problems with this point of view because bad ideas that are good at propagating themselves can succeed. They have a mimetic level of fitness which enables them to propagate despite them being bad ideas. Religion is essentially a mind virus. Self-help nonsense like The Secret is another instance of bad memes that are good at spreading themselves. Well, meme plexes, technically, a collection of memes that together are toxic but very good at spreading themselves. But generally, I'm against censorship because it's impossible to draw a line, really, what's okay and what isn't. Is pornography okay? Is anti-Semitic propaganda okay? Is child pornography okay? What about drawn child pornography? What about written child pornography? There's no really good line upon which you can say absolutely 100% in all circumstances this is bad really the closest we have is the harm principle and that's what I hew to the harm principle being that the only real justification you can have for infringing upon someone's liberty is if they're doing harm and by harm what was meant was you know actual real and physical harm so I'm against censorship because it's too subjective, because the only real grounds upon which you have to censor is a demonstrable level of harm, and it's very hard to demonstrate a physical level of harm from things that people say and write or do, short of perhaps direct calls to violence. Another example that I would say meets the harm principle is anti-vaccination propaganda, because this is an existential threat to humanity as a whole if we allow diseases to take hold again and it's encouraging people to harm children who are helpless and to whom we have a duty of care but generally speaking i think ideas even noxious ideas even ideas like 
the secret should be allowed to propagate. But as Rachel points out, there are harms that come with the secret, but they're largely passive and circumstantial harms. The idea that you can change the world just by thinking about it or by praying, or the equivalent in the case of the secret, is nonsense. It's nonsense propagated by charlatans, new ages, people abusing quantum theory to try and claim that the universe is a conscious entity or that consciousness can influence the universe, things like that. It's a pseudo-scientific knot of nonsense. And the idea that you can heal yourself or make your life better just by wishing can be actively harmful. But then it's more an act of self-harm, ironic since this is considered to be a self-help book. And should people have the right to harm themselves? Should you be able to abuse drugs if you want to? Should you be able to scarify yourself if you want to? Should you be able to kill yourself if you want to? And it's hard to justify impinging on that when it comes to people harming themselves. So the secret, unlike anti-vaxxer pro uh, propaganda and, and so on, exists in a kind of nebulous space where it's primarily self-harm. The promotion of the idea is causing harm, but you can't draw a direct line in the way that you can in these other instances that I've talked about. So then, surely I have my answer, don't I? It doesn't do any direct harm. It's a bad set of ideas that can be picked apart and taken to pieces. Debunked. So I should be against burning them right well my objection to book burning comes from thought patterns historical events and so forth that pre-exist the internet even if we burned every single physical copy of the secret in, in existence the secret would still exist because it would still be around digitally on piracy servers and as ebooks and and whatever else we live in an age where information is essentially unerasable good or bad and also we live in a time when bad information tends to be more popular and to propagate more freely than the good information so in essence, burning them makes no difference whatsoever. But then in that case, why bother doing it in the first place? Well, that makes it a symbolic gesture. Okay, so now we're talking about communications media. Uh, the act of symbolically burning this book expresses a severe disapproval but it also taps into all this history and symbolism that first gave me pause about book burning, you know, Nazis burning stuff. It's also likely that the people involved in the secret and so forth are likely to take the burning of the book as validation <laughs> of their ideas that it is a dangerous idea that must be suppressed and the man is out to get them and that, that lends it some sort of cachet and uh, appeal. Uh, by validating that, that, that whole faux, astroturfed, rebellious, you know, hidden knowledge idea that it wraps itself in. So if a symbolic gesture is pointless, then it's pointless to burn the book. If a symbolic gesture can have meaning, then we have to reconsider those past meanings again. We have to consider the effect that it will have upon the people who consume it and upon the people who sell it. And on consideration, it's likely to actually help them, if, if anything. This, this is not good. Then again, there's some other things to consider. So I've already said I think this may end up actually helping uh, the people behind the secret, which doesn't strike me as a, as a good thing. And it will also invoke these kind of feelings and immediate reactions, similar to the one that I first had, but much more violently, because most people don't stop to really think about what they're feeling before they start acting. 
So there's that, but there's also positive consequences. This event, however small, is likely to bring people together and, and forge friendships amongst people who are also sceptical um, and who believe in a more rational world. It may get media attention, which while it may help the people behind the secret, may also help the opposition. It may elevate it to be part of public conversation. Yeah, this is good. Um, all the money that will go to AIDS charities, that's got to be a, a, a good outcome as well. Yeah. Do the ends justify the means? That then becomes the problem. And I am no nearer to figuring out whether I want to support this or not. So I'm going to hedge. I will give Rachel a little bit of money towards her endeavour. And I will give you all the, the link to it. You can all go through your own process of thinking, and if you find a way to cut through it that I that I haven't been able to, by all means, tell me. And I'll leave that moral choice up to everyone else. I can't seem to process it, and I'm stuck. <laughs> so, there you go. Thank you, Rachel, for a very difficult ethical dilemma for me to try and navigate using pure reason. <laughs> Ugh, tricky. Zang.